Well then, Bunny, let's talk about books. You see, people always say, hey, Steve, how do you keep your hair so shiny and clean? To which I say, the back of the freaking bottle says, wash, rinse, repeat. <laughs> so many people then get the shampoo and they go, wash, rinse. Was there another part? I don't think so. I'm done. <laughs> I never repeat. I always repeat. And that's why my hair is so silky smooth and luxurious. And that's why you pay it's... twice as much for shampoo. Wash, rinse, repeat, not wash, rinse. Eh. <laughs> that's not the directions. That's what the directions say. I don't need no stinking that it's, I'm done. It's wash, rinse, and I got shit to do. Yeah, yeah. People also say, hey, write what you know. And what I know is that I've been a loyal and, as far as they can tell, hardworking employee at my local bookstore for over 17 years. Yes. If my career were a person, then my career would probably be gearing up for all of those tests, all of those big tests that you do. The ACTs, the PSATs, yeah. the P, the PSSSTATs. That's yeah. that's a test where where all the questions are whispered. Yes, they go. Psst, if there are two trains, <laughs> there's the T set, the coffee set, the SATs, the BVDs, the RVDs, the MSNBCs. Trump. <laughs> Trump hates that test. Yes. The PODs, otherwise known as the Youth of the Nation test. <laughs> uh, thank you. I wasn't sure about that joke. So thank you for that. The M cat, the M dog, the M snake. Interesting fact the M snake test is exactly the same as the M cat and the M dog test, except you need to have a lot more tattoos. Ah. Uh, and vape. Uh, okay. I, I see how that can come in handy. Yeah, yeah. There's the ASVAB, the flitamajigger, the T's test, um, which is a, which is a test to to test your ability to make fun of people. Like, hey, your shirt's ugly. Oh, my mom got me this shirt. <laughs> and as such, I really do have my skeletal fingers on the pulse of the book world, and I am here. To rub my skeletal fingers on your face. No! Oh, Bella didn't like that. With this week's unforgettably forgettable installment of Notes from the Bookstore! Dun, dun, dun! And this week's Notes from the Bookstore comes from Down Home Country Girl, cough, cough, BS, cough, cough. Uh, down Home Country Girl, Ree Drummond, and her brand new cookbook, Come and get it. Gee, with such a <laughs> with such a rural sounding title, she must be authentically down home and country, homespun, rural farm cowgirl, and not an immensely wealthy one percenter. In fact, I, I heard the original title of her cookbook was Yeehaw Spit on Floor, Trickle Down Economics is sure to work this time. <laughs> they decided instead that uh come and get it was a better title. And let me tell you something about Reed Drummond's new book, Come and Get It. This book is full of wonderful recipes and funny stories and amazing pictures. And this book makes the perfect gift for everyone you know. Everyone you know. Literally everyone. Everyone. Which is why you should seriously consider coming to uh, the bookstore, specifically my bookstore, and buying 200 copies of Reed Drummond's new book, Come and Get It. And just to be <laughs> clear, I am not saying that because our store got way too much, a ridiculous amount, and it's the holidays, so we can't return any of these books. That's not what I'm saying. Stop putting words in my mouth, you son of a bitch. What I'm saying <laughs> is that Reed Drummond's new book, entitled Come and Get It, yes. is the perfect gift for everyone you know, and even people that you don't know. You're at the supermarket, and you're, you, you know, someone's, someone's checking you out, mm -hmm. you know, uh, beeping your items, 
And then they go, oh, that'll be twenty-seven fifty. And you go, wow, thank you. Uh, you're very nice. Here's a tip for you. No, not money. It's Reed Drummond's new cookbook entitled Come and Get It. Uh-huh. And then uh, the bagger goes, here you go. And you go, oh, thank you for bagging all of my groceries. You know what? I got a tip for you. <laughs> no, it's not money. It's Reed Drummond's new cookbook entitled Come and Get It. <laughs> With the groceries done, of course, you got to make a trip to the post office real quick. Uh, uh, wow, there must be. Uh, wow, there must be what, like 30, 40 people working at, at the post office, you know? And I'm a glass half full guy. In fact, I'm not even a glass half full or a glass half empty guy. I'm just excited I got a glass. Yes. <laughs> you know? A lot of people out there that don't even have a glass. So I'm just happy that I've, I've, I've got a cup I'm holding. Yeah. So. So you know what all of these post office employees might like? A copy of Reed Drummond's new cookbook entitled Come and Get It! <laughs> go out and pick up your copy. Pick a, go, go out and pick up your 200 copies of Reed Drummond's brand new cookbook. Come and get it today. Although you should specifically go to my store. It's in nowhere, Oklahoma. Please. <laughs> so it's December, bunny. And yes, in your local bookstore, that means new hires and training. And also the yearly holiday meeting. Okay. Or in our store, at least, it's an occasionally yearly-ish holiday meeting. Because I swear we didn't have one last year. And I'm not sure about the year after that. I don't even know what I had for breakfast this morning. It was gluten-free waffles, sir. Oh, yes, that's right. Anyway. <laughs> meeting is always a bit wonky for me personally because I live freaking far. Yeah. I live like 45 to 50 minutes away from my work. So that's 45 minutes to the meeting and 45 minutes back. And you know how long the meeting is? Usually an hour. Yeah. So the drive to and from the meeting is longer than the time it takes for me to get to the meeting and back. Yes. Plus, we always have to have it during a time when uh, everybody can come and when the store is closed because we need to go through the entire store and stuff. And so it's always uh, a Sunday night after we close because that's uh, Sundays we close early. So the meeting's usually between like 930 and 1030. Yeah. Or like 930 and 1045, 1050, 1055 because these uh, meetings run long. So that means I'm getting home at like 11.45, 11.50, and it, it, that's way late. I got kids. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. I got to wake up crazy early because Bella will only wake up if you start waking her up 45 minutes before she is actually supposed to wake up. Okay. It's a, it's a delicate system. You have to start waking her up at 6 a.m., and then 6.10, and then 6.20, and then 6.30, and then around 6.45, she'll probably get up. You ever just That's try flipping over her mattress? What I try and do is I try to have some sort of physical contact with her, because yeah. she'll be out. She will be sleeping. She will be gone, and I'll be like, Bella, wake up. And she'll be dead asleep. Bella, it's time to wake up. And she'll just be gone. Her mouth is open and she's just completely gone. Bella, it's time to wake up. And nothing. Bella and I lightly touch her knee and immediately she's just, don't touch me. <laughs> it's like magical. It's magical. You just have to have some sort of physical contact. Bella, wake up. And you lightly touch her shoulder and she just goes from... To, I'm up, stop touching me! To, in like <laughs> 2.3 seconds. It's magical and I love it. I wake up whenever I want to. Uh, but it, that's because it takes my effort to get you to wake up when you want to. <gasps> what I'm trying to say is you're welcome. I would try and sing the song from Moana, but I don't know it that well. I've I barely watched the film. I in your face. Oh, yeah? Well, if you punched my face, then I would punch your face. 
in the face. <laughs> in the face. So I live really far, and it's late for me. I gotta wake up early for the kids. Plus, holiday meetings are mostly newbie stuff. So it's weird to to be there. It's like, okay, we have an hour long meeting. Let's uh, get right into this dress code. And it's like, okay, uh-huh. so much of this is not in any way going to be for me. Yeah. I'm a receiving manager. I literally can come dressed however I want. And I know that because I have come to work in pajamas. I've come to work dressed as a pirate. I've come to work in a taco outfit for no reason whatsoever. I've really <laughs> test the boundaries of <laughs> receiving managers can come in dressed however they want. Yes. And, and, and also, they, they always say, hey, it's a holiday meeting. You're not at work. You'll get paid for it. But... You know, you're off the clock, so you can dress however you want. I'm always the only one in full body footsie pajamas. <laughs> Three holiday meetings. I've come with a uh, food and a pillow and full body footsie pajamas, and I'm the only one. All these other like 20 year olds are dressed like they're going freaking clubbing. Yeah. <laughs> to go get one of your meetings. Basically, I'm in there dressed like I'm about to fall asleep. <laughs> so the holiday meetings are officially the holidays are officially here. We are in the ship. Yes. So it yeah, it today I I had to shelve the weekly magazines. Uh-huh. And so it, usually it doesn't take me that long. I, I just got to shelve the magazines that we get in every week. It, they're a priority above the other magazines. So it's like, okay, time, Newsweek, New Yorker, Entertainment Weekly sometimes, uh, Us Magazine, um, yada, yada, yada. So I was yeah. doing that today, and it took me about an hour and a half because people are just getting desperate. It's that desperate time where people stop being racist and it's less about I don't know if I should ask that Mexican for help it's oh my god he has a name tag swarm swarm (laughs) hi I'm looking for the following 12 books yeah so that's really fun for me so anyway let me tell you about last weekend okay let me tell you about my story times. Remember, I am a storytelling receiving manager. There's really no others. I'm a unicorn, basically. Last weekend, I did three big story times in less than 24 hours. Really? Yeah, in 24 hours, I did three huge story times. Kind of, sort of, accidentally. Here's how it happened. First off. Once a year during Christmas, we have a Polar Express story time, and it's at night at like seven o'clock. We give uh, hot chocolate and cookies to the kids, and we read the Polar Express. We do it every year. It's a big, huge thing every year. And uh, finally, like a week, like a week before the story time, I went to my manager and I and I, I said, "Hey, um, so this whole Polar Express story time thing that we're doing this Friday." At 7 p.m. You don't have anyone to do that, do you? And she just went, oh, shit. <laughs> to do the story time. And I said, I can do the story time if you want me to. It's just, uh, you know, you'll have to have somebody here. So they, they uh, uh, fiddled with the schedule. And there you go. Boom. And they said, OK, so you're going to be closing this day. And there you are. You're going to be doing the Polar Express story time. And uh, what about the next day? And I said, well, the next day we we have How the Grinch Stole Christmas Story Time. That's at 11. And I'll just have to do the both of those. Are you going to be okay with doing two big story times in less than 24 hours? I go, yeah. What's the worst that could happen? So I did the Polar Express Story Time. <laughs> so I did the Polar Express Story Time. It was at 7 p.m. We had a ton of people. And uh, the the mistake was the ca- I said to the cafe people, hey, you guys are going to be coming in with the cookies and milk right yeah when do you want us to come in and i said whenever you want whenever you guys want to at any time it's going to be take about 45 minutes to an hour to do story time anytime you want to come in there just go for it i didn't realize that they would literally be there waiting before i even started story time okay 
Like, okay, when I said come give the the hot chocolate and cookies at any time, I didn't mean right off, right out of the gate. <laughs> but, Anyway, like I'm trying to read this book. The kids are like hopped up on sugar and they're jumping around. And and there was only one major spill. So I consider that an unqualified success. Yeah. But there was one thing that happened. There was a kid that showed up like an hour and a half early and he just stayed there sitting on in the bench waiting. Oh, can I guess? Can I guess? Did he teach you the true meaning of Christmas? No, no. Uh, He it was it was this little boy. He was um, about five, and he was there with his mom and his brother, who was an expensive bear puppet. (laughs) Okay. And the kid was in his pajamas, and he was sitting there, and he had a bear hat on, and his pajamas had little bears on him. And, And I go, oh, hi, are you ready for for a polar express story time for because it's a pajama story time i saw you're in pajamas if you look at me i'm wearing pajamas too check out my pajamas and he goes yes i'm in pajamas and this is my mom and this is my brother kyle Ooh. And, he, and he has the the bear as a puppet and he starts talking as his brother kyle in a <laughs> completely different voice and 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 it, it, suddenly he just puts this bear in front of my face. Hello, I'm Kyle. I'm his brother. We love each other. And I'm like, oh, Kyle, uh, great. Uh, glad to meet you. And Kyle puts his little fake bear paw out. And I'm like, okay, I'll shake your hand. Uh-huh. And and so um. I I kept watching this kid for like the hour, hour and a half that he was waiting for story time. And both uh, the kid and his mom took turns being the brother. Really? Okay. That's yeah, sometimes, sometimes when the boy didn't wanted to, to really talk to Kyle, the boy would take Kyle off of his hand and give it to his mom. And his mom would be Kyle. The <laughs> oh. bear. That's, uh, that's really bizarre, dude. Oh yeah, it was one of the most amazing things I've ever seen. That's that that kid is either insane or a professional. It was incredible. It was incredible. I that kid is amazing. Yeah, I, I I made a weird joke that he didn't get because uh, the kid was wearing like a you know one of those like winter hats, but it it you know it has like a character on it yeah. anyway, yeah. and it's got the ear flaps that come down. Anyway, it was a little bear. So then he took it off and he put it on his brother Kyle, and he said, "Mr. Steve, look." It's my brother bear, and he he has a hat, and the hat is a bear. And I said, "Wow!" <laughs> so it's a bear wearing a bear. That's bearception. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he had no idea what I was talking about, which is good because if he knew <laughs> Inception, then that would be even weirder. <laughs> so that was a huge story time. The kids just wouldn't stop screaming, and it was weird because I wasn't trying to get them to scream. It's just that a lot of the kids who came to the Polar Express story time had been to story times before, and apparently the one thing that they took from that is, oh, hey, uh, Mr. Steve is doing this story time. He lets us scream. Ah! They were just screaming through the whole thing, and it was just it, it, it was really difficult, especially oh, yeah. because the Polar Express sucks. Yes. I hate that book and it's way too long and it's just it just mm-hmm. sucks and it's difficult for me to try and add things to it. And and so it was a, it's a, so it's a difficult one for me to read. The the one thing that I really have is the fact that I always call the elves elvises. Okay. Suddenly mm-hmm. when they reached the north pole, they, they saw it. Elvises as far as they could see. Hundreds and <laughs> Thousands of Elvises waiting for Santa. Oh, well, Santa's going to (laughs) come. Got to build these toys. And the kids are just yelling at me because I'm doing it wrong. So then I, so then like, I don't get home until like 1045. Right. 11 o'clock. And 
so I, I come home, I have a beer or two, I go to sleep, I wake up super early, I come to work, and now it's the Grinch story time, and I have just as many kids for the Grinch story time, because every year when we read the Grinch, that's a really big deal. And I love reading how the Grinch stole Christmas, because I'm always messing with it. Okay, good. Oh, How so? I, 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 I try and call it out like uh, it could be perhaps that his shoes were on too tight. Kids, don't listen to Dr. Seuss. He's not wearing shoes. <laughs> or perhaps the most... the. Or perhaps the reason is because his heart was two sizes too small. Kids, this book was written in 1956. There are surgeries we can perform now with lasers that will fix this. <laughs> Even if he doesn't want to get the laser surgery, there are pills he can take where he can still be a happy, successful member of society. Yes. And so... uh and I, I made a Bruce Noble reference during story time because right nice. before story, Bruce Noble made a comment on the picture and he said, will you be singing? You're a mean one, Mr. Grinch. And I said during story time, I said, kids, now there's a number of songs from the TV show, How the Grinch Stole Christmas, that I love to sing, but I, I can't. Do any of you kids know anything about copyright law? No? Well, it's <laughs> okay. I will be singing soundalikes. You're a bad guy green person <laughs> so i was really proud of that and then i mentioned the mandela effect when you get when you get to the part where he he uh he yes you can have some of my water maxwell okay so you we you get to the point where like he he got he's got the sleigh he's got his dog match max he hitches his dog up to the sleigh and then the grinch says but in in the book, it says that the Grinch says, Gididap. Okay. G-I-D-D-A-P, exclamation point. And, and I say, then the Grinch said, Gididap. And then, and then the kids are, are all freaking out like, no, Mr. Steve, he says giddy up. And I says, yeah, that's why you think he says. But I've got it right here. Look at this book. The Grinch says, Gididap. <laughs> but that's wrong. Yeah, but this is the original book. And the original book says, Gididap. But you are all convinced that in the original book, he says, Giddy up. Do you kids know what the Mandela effect is? <laughs> no? Well, let me try and summarize it for you. You're from a different universe. You know what? I'm not going to get into it. But look. The book says get adapt. So then I'm done with both of the stories, with both of the story times really big, and I'm cleaning up from that second story time, and all the parents are just like patting me on the back and going, Wow, two big story times. You must be exhausted. Yeah. And I go, Yeah, no, I'm pretty exhausted. I don't know how I'm gonna get through the rest of the day. So I finished at noon. Now let me tell you about my huge story time at 1 30. Okay. This is how I remember it. <laughs> is it this, all a blur? It, well, well uh, no. This, this is, no, this is, it, we're going back now. We're going back into the past. This is how I remember this conversation happening. It probably is in no way how the conversation happened. This is just how I now remember it, knowing what happened at 1.30 that day. So this is how I remember the conversation. I'm in the break room, at the break room table, probably eating lunch, a cup of noodles, and something else, because now that I'm in receiving, I need twice as much food uh -huh. than I used to eat. I am burning calories so much, I just need so much. I eat a ridiculous amount of food during my lunch breaks. So I'm there probably reading like a uh, right wing watch.org or the onion AV club. And suddenly <laughs> in, in the, the, the community relations office, Katie leans back on the rolly chair that's in front of the community relations computer. And she says, Steve, it's me, Katie. Also it's July or August. <laughs> Important. I don't know why I'm saying that, but I, I am. I'm Katie, and it's July or August. So anyway, I'm setting up 
a, some big book fairs during Christmas and Lincoln Elementary wants you to do a story time for them uh, in the first weekend of December. Do you think you could do that around 1.30, Steve? And I said, sure, but remind me, because there's no way I'll remember this, because as you said, Katie, it's July or August now. Yes. And then Katie said, sure, I'll remind you before the time comes. There's no reason to expect that I will quit before the end of the year. It's July or August. <laughs> So I'm shelving magazines, and I'm exhausted from my two story times, and I'm about five minutes away from clocking out until I'm called by the store manager, and she says, do you remember something about a story time? And I and there were 20 kids waiting in the children's department for story time. Oh. And I was about to clock out to lunch, and I'm starving and exhausted, and I was going to get, you know, a... a I had an emergency energy drink mm -hmm. in the fridge, but nope, I had to do story time. Thankfully, uh, all of the kids who were waiting for story time were from a, a, a school, uh, Lincoln Elementary, and they had never been to one of my story times before. And I'm like, really? Kids have never been to my story times? Well, I guess you guys are getting the best of Mr. Steve. <laughs> And I just dusted off all of those books that I've read a bajillion times and all of those bits that I've done a bajillion times and just all, all of those things that kids who come to story time know. They know the pigeon's going to come out. They know, you know, the it, it's some of the parts that I've come up with for some of the books that I read. So, so yeah, no, I, I, I dusted off the best of Mr. Steve for those kids. And, I yeah, three story times in less than 24 hours. Wow. That is impressive. Really proud of that. Now, before, be. yeah. Now, before I finish, um, notes from the bookstore. I want to talk about Dollar General again. Okay. I've mentioned it a number of times before on the podcast, but Dollar General is a sort of general store that you find in small towns in the Midwest. Basically, it's the Walmart of small towns that can't get a Walmart. Yes. There's like three or four Dollar Generals in, in my town here. It's Dollar Generals are usually pretty ghetto, like a lot of customers with neck tattoos. Uh-huh. Who vape. Yes. A lot, a lot of people with holes in, holes in pajamas type people. Uh-huh. It's, it's, it's not the greatest place to shop, but, but the, I, I go there sometimes because it's just close. It's like a block away. Sometimes the... The teens just walk there because it's and dude, <laughs> funny. Yes, they have jolt. Really, they have jolt. I've been drinking so much jolt, and I was worried at first before I bought the jolt for the first time because because I the what I was thinking was there's no way it can taste the same. Yes, but it does. It tastes the same. It's it's like a like you got an RC cola and just put like 50 sugar packets in it. It, it tastes the <laughs> same. And I'm excited about that. I am all about energy drinks this holiday season. I mentioned it before, but I'm going to say it again. My pee is so neon that I'm pretty sure I'm a My Little Pony character right now. <laughs> I'm I'm, uh, I'm Flutter Steve or Twinkle Spick. I'm Latino, so I can say that. <laughs> My pee is so neon that the other day I was at work and I was peeing and my pee was flashing. Eat at Joe's. Eat at Joe's. <laughs> Eat at Joe's. It's funny because like in California, everyone drank Red Bull. That was just what everybody drank. Yeah. But here in the Midwest, for some strange reason, everyone loves Monster Energy drink. I don't like Monster Energy drink. Neither do I. It's made from Bruce Banner's pee. Yes. But people wear... Monster Energy drink shirts and hats, and they have car decals on the back of their pickup trucks. And I've seen people with Monster Energy drink tattoos and and I've like, seen them with shirts. yeah, I've seen them with shirts and hats shirts. and shit. Like it, Monster Energy drink, for some reason, is is, is basically the Nike of the Midwest. <laughs> and I have no idea why. 
Yeah. The same way that I was when I was in California, every third person was wearing a Raiders jersey. Yeah. Or a Raiders hat or a Raiders anything. Basically, Monster Energy Drink is the Raiders of the Midwest. I, it's the name <laughs> that I don't like. Personally, I like Rockstar, then Blue Red Bull, and then Jolt. Yeah. I won't drink Monster you, you Energy. You consider Jolt an energy drink? The way I drink it, yes. I down that thing like it's a shot. Yeah. I down it. <laughs> I down. I down it like it's water, and I just came from the Sahara. When I say Sahara, I mean the really bad Matthew McConaughey movie. Yes. Just to be clear. Also, you know who was a big fan of Monster Energy Drink, who used to love Monster Energy Drink? Who? My former friend Ricky was a big fan of Monster Energy Drink. Ricky! Oops, sorry. Good job, Bella. Good job. <laughs> way to way to tie it in with the film podcast. That was really good. <laughs> also, this might be my first mention of Ricky on the podcast. And I know, Bunny, you sick, twisted freak. You must have just been rigid with excitement over the possibility of me dusting off this painful memory of my history. Yes. I was doing like the my career history, but I stopped because there's like this difficult part where like I broke up a marriage and someone tried to kill me at work. <laughs> Here's the cliff notes or the spark notes because we don't carry cliff notes. Uh, basically, I broke up a marriage or as I like as I kind of see it now, I was used to break up a marriage. Yeah, I used to that I broke up someone's marriage, but I believe that I was used because if it wasn't me, it would have been someone else. Understandable. That this woman used to try and get out of this relationship. Honestly, I'm still processing it. It's odd because I was reading back at my blog like a, like a year ago. And, and essentially what I forget is that it was a love triangle. I forgot in the fog of history that not only did the wife have a thing for me, but also the husband. I kind of forgot about that. Oh, so yeah it, it, it's a painful memory yeah. and eventually i'm gonna have to talk about that bella do you need to pee you're just no. standing right I, next I to me to... bouncing up and down and you're just really giving me the hoo jeebies well what did you want to say do you have something like on deck like i wanted to ask you if you wanted some pizza what? it's hawaiian it's a, uh, a toasted piece of bread with a piece of pineapple and a piece of ham on it. This is a Hawaiian yeah. pizza. Mm -hmm. I will eat this Hawaiian pizza. Thank you, Bella. Yay! Thank you. <laughs> yes, you were successful in getting me to uh, switch gears. Yes. So I appreciate that. So... Also, if any uh, receiving managers are listening to this, because I successfully, sneakily got notes from the bookstore advertised on my <laughs> Facebook group of receiving managers. Oh, nice. I tried before to get my podcast advertised on the uh, group of just book employees of this book corporation, because there's like, 3,000 people in this group. Yeah. But uh, I was not allowed to, and they shot me down. So I, I finally sneakily got to advertise it on my group of receiving managers because it's a different universe uh -huh. in that group. And so if any receiving managers are listening, you should also tune into this week's homework because I go off on being a receiving manager during this week's homework. <laughs> okay. So my job is so difficult right now during the holidays. It's basically seeping out into every other aspect of my life. Um, and that is part of what this podcast is here for. Yes, exactly. Next week, I have a huge story. A huge story in Notes from the Bookstore. A huge story about a magazine that is amazing. I okay. can't wait for next week's notes from the bookstore. I it will blow you away, Bunny. <laughs> okay, it will blow you away. I'm so excited. I'm I'm Any ready to be blown. Okay. Oh. 
And that is it for notes from the bookstore this week. And remember, boys and girls and the rainbow, you too can save 10% on all of your purchases. And all you have to do is parentheses, insert funny thing here, parentheses. Don't worry, Bunny. I'm sure I'll find something funny to say uh, by the time we record this episode. Oh, awesome. Never mind. Uh, I'll, <laughs> we'll fix it in post. We'll fix it in post. Fix it in post. And cut. That is notes from the bookstore.